Okay, in this video, I'm looking at um, tightening up a bit of a performance using stretch markers in Reaper on a piece of audio here. So this is a little piano piece. It's going to become a loop, so the timing needs to be pretty on the grid. So it's a little bit loose, and I'm going to use stretch markers to try and tighten it up a little bit. So this is what it sounds like at the moment. So you can tell just here, it sounds a bit late, which is probably because this bit is a bit early here. Um, so it just needs moving around a little bit and I'm just gonna use stretch markers to do that. So you can do this manually. Um, I could just come in here and I could, from a cursor where I wanna put a stretch marker, just at the beginning of this transient here, and I could right click Stretch markers, add stretch marker at cursor. You can see the key command here is a shift W. So we could shift W here, or you can use the key command um, option command and then just click with the uh, mouse. And that creates a stretch marker here. Now if I move that marker, it immediately puts in another marker right at the beginning of the item and one right at the end. It's like two anchor points. However, if I move this stretch marker around, you can see that all the audio preceding it and afterwards is gonna get shifted as well, so it'll all go out of time. So when you're using stretch markers, you need to anchor around the one that you want to move in most cases. So the way I would do this is look for a, a transient that looks like it's lining up in the right sort of place. So we've got a good one here. So I'll put a stretch marker there, so it's option command. And then I'm just gonna chuck in a couple more on these transients. So that looks a bit out of time. I'm gonna put one there. And I'm gonna come here, option command, click. There, one there, one there. Okay, one there, maybe this one looks actually okay. Um, and then, because I've got a stretch marker after this one and before it, then when I move this stretch marker is just going to affect the audio in that section. So it's anchored by those two stretch markers to the left and to the right. So I'm just going to put that one more on the grid. This one you can see here also needs just to move. This one is also early. This one, which is fine, is anchored by this stretch marker here. We can do this one. This is a little bit early. I'm obviously, most of these are a little bit early. This was played to a click track. Uh, it just needs just to be a little bit tighter. So that's looking a lot better. Let's have a listen. That one feels a little bit late. And we could go on adding more and more stretch markers and tightening the whole thing up. It's actually quite quick to do. Um, but you can automate it a little bit more. Um, first of all, once you've put your stretch markers on your transients, you could just right click the item and come to stretch markers in selected items and snap to grid. And they would all go absolutely on the grid. But you've got to make sure you've got the stretch markers absolutely in the right place as far as the transient is concerned. So let's change those a little bit. And the other way you can automate it is, let's, let's get rid of all these stretch markers for a minute. Let's just remove them. Is we can use dynamic split to create the stretch markers on transient transients automatically. So you can select your item and then come up to the edit and come here to dynamic split, or you can just press D. We want to split our audio at transients, and we don't want to actually split the item, we want to add stretch markers to the selected items. We can see the transients that it's going to add stretch markers to with these vertical dotted lines. Now I've already set the sensitivity for this. So especially with pieces like this, which are quite soft, there's not a huge dynamic range, the transients aren't as obvious as, say, a percussive track. 
it takes a little bit of tweaking to get an, a, a good result. So the way that you do this is to go to the set transient sensitivity box here. And I've already set this to 100% sensitivity, basically because it's quite a soft, non-dynamic piece. And I've got my threshold, which is these two horizontal lines here running through the waveform. And the idea here is to get the lines to come and just touch the sort of quietest transient that you have. So if obviously if I, if I pull them up here, I lose pretty much all the transients and then I'm just going to come down, back down to about minus 37. I think it's where it was working pretty well. Yeah. So that's that. And then a good tip with this is to adjust the minimum slice length. So if I just put this to the default place, then you can see with that amount of sensitivity, we get lots and lots of slices and that's no good, that's, that's hopeless. So we can adjust that with this here and just increase the slice, the minimum slice length to make it work for this performance, for this piece of audio. And that looks good. And then once we've done that, we can just add stretch markers and it will add a stretch marker where each of those hor uh, vertical dotted lines were. Now, it doesn't always get it absolutely right, and we can see we've missed one. So we can come in here, we can add a stretch marker there, and this one doesn't really look right. Uh, so let's just option click that one to delete it, and let's just go in and put another one there. And then, now it's done all of our stretch markers, we can automate it again. We can just go to right click, Stretch markers in selected items. Snap to grid. I've got my grid set up to eighth notes. Obviously, you need to adjust that for whatever piece of whatever performance. Snap to grid, and then that's that done. Good example there is. Um, it's all worked quite well. Don't really need this stretch marker here. It's not really doing anything and it might be actually having a, an adverse effect. Um, so let's just take that one out and have another listen. The creaking you can sound is actually the piano. It's, a, it's a, an, an old German Steck 1930s upright. Um, yeah, so taking that little stretch marker out, it didn't need to be in there, it wasn't serving any purpose, I think it was just causing an artefact. And that's the other thing, is that if you find that, if you're having to move the stretch markers quite a lot, then obviously you can start to get sort of warbling and various artefacts, and, it, and, and that's no good. But it's worth checking what algorithm your item is working to in terms of time stretching. Now you can set it to follow the project settings, or you can do it by an item item by item basis so you can right click go to settings sorry item properties come down to the um, take pitch and time stretch mode here and I'm using this Elastic 333 Pro and I've got that set to normal I've got it set in mode terms to tonal optimized and there are a few that you can try here if it was a solo instrument as in an oboe or something like that then soloist might work better definitely worth experimenting with for a polyphonic sort of piece like this on the piano then I find the Elastic 333 Pro works best um, so that's definitely worth checking okay so that's um, using stretch markers to tighten up a little bit of audio <laughs> 